people said amen? Amen. God's people said amen again. Amen. Indeed, we are blessed beyond measure to be in the presence of an almighty God. Amen. I am excited, delighted, and ignited amen. to be a spokesperson for God. Amen. And it's nothing like being in the presence of God's people singing God's praises, and to be a partaker of God's work. Amen. And I want to personally thank God for, uh, for, for sending the Watkins family to this Amen. side of the kingdom. We are so grateful uh, for him and his family and the work that is going on here. And I've, he may not even notice, but I've learned so much from him in this short time, and I look forward to continue to work with him. And, Learning from him, he just brings so much uh, to the table, and we're just so grateful for him, his lovely wife, and children. And we're thankful for God for all of the abundant blessings that he has bestowed upon us all. Years ago, the captain of a large vessel set sail with his family from Liverpool, and his destination was New York. And one night when everybody was asleep, a sudden storm arose. The wind came sweeping over the water, struck the vessel, and almost capsized it. Everything that was movable with stumbling and, and crashing, and the passengers became aware of the imminent peril. Everyone was alarmed, and everyone began to panic. But the captain's little daughter, who was just eight years old. She was awakened out of her sleep and she cried with fright. What's the matter? What's going on? And when they told her about the storm and how the waves were raging, she asked the question. And her question was, is father on deck? <laughs> Assured that he was, the little girl just went back to her cabin, laid on her bed, and went right back to sleep without any fear whatsoever. In spite of the howling winds and the, the crashing waves, she was soon fast asleep. Why? Because Father was on deck. This ought to be the attitude of every Christian, amen? When we face the rough seas of life, this ought to be our attitude. All we need to know is that Father is on deck. Well, the Bible teaches us to live by faith. In verses like Mark 11 and 2 and Habakkuk 2 and 4, we are reminded of faith and, and how the daily lifestyle of the child of God should be lived. When we read Hebrews 11 and 6, uh, we see that uh, without this quality called faith, that we'll never be able to please the Lord. We know that we are saved by faith, but just how do we go about living every day by faith? Thankful to God that the Bible does not leave us in the dark regarding this topic. It sheds a lot of light on this important topic. Well, tonight as the Lord gives me liberty, I would just like to preach on the topic, the anatomy of faith. <laughs> The anatomy of faith. Anatomy is simply the detailed analysis of something. Mm -hmm. Now, we've heard the subject preached and taught, and over and over there have been pulpitarians before me and pulpitarians after me that will come before you uh, to teach this wonderful lesson. We can never get enough lessons on faith. Amen. So I just want to look at a little while what is faith and what isn't faith. It's just the anatomy of faith. So let's look at what faith is not. Let's look at some of the, the fallacies surrounding faith. First of all, faith is not a blind leap. There are many that feel that a life lived by faith is a person that's a fool. They speculate that faith is nothing more than a leap into the dark. However, faith is much more than just walking around blind waiting for providence to bump into you. Mm -hmm. Faith is your response to 
to the promises that God has for your life. God says, I will lead you. Faith says, I will follow. God says, I will feed you. Faith says, I will eat. God says, I will meet your needs. Faith says, it is done. God says, I will protect you. Faith says, I will have no fear. God says, I will call you. Faith says, here am I. Send me. Faith is never a leap into the dark. It is always based on the, the firmest of foundation, which is the word of God. The person who really walks in faith never walks through life blind. He always knows what's ahead. So, so faith is not a blind leap, nor is faith a blank check. This whole name it and claim it philosophy that, that permeates in these churches today. People have been taught that if they want something from God, no matter what it is, just ask for it. And all you gotta do is ask for it and claim it, and it's yours. The problem with that concept is that too many people pray outside of the will of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want that man, girl? Just claim him. <laughs> you want that job? Just claim it. That may not be God's will for your life. That's right. Stop claiming stuff that's not even a part of God's plan. Therefore, many become discouraged. They just, they're discouraged in their faith and they're disappointed with God because he didn't do it like they wanted him to do it. Faith is not a blank check. You know, God is not some cosmic Santa Claus that, that's just waiting for us to place our orders and we just drive away with anything and everything that we desire. Amen? See, that, that, that's that charismatic thinking. Uh, our charismatic friends love this, this name it and claim it uh, theology, but our friends have missed the mark. Amen. God is about larger and greater things than just waiting for me to come up with a wish list and he can just grant my wish. So faith is not a blind leap, faith is not a blank check, and faith is not a bad choice. There are those who will say that it is foolish to walk in total obedience and total dependence upon the law. These people argue that God is an unknown. He is an unseen force with which man cannot interact and have fellowship with. They call the Christians who live by faith a fool. Mm -hmm. However, the Christian who determines to truly live his life by total faith will never be disappointed with God. Mm -hmm. Nor will he struggle uh, through life blindly. Mm -hmm. There will be a deep, settled assurance that God is in absolute control of all of our situations. And that his will shall be accomplished in the life of his children. I'm here to tell you that faith is not a bad choice. From the beginning of time, many would conclude that faith is a bad choice. In the patriarchal dispensation, some may have said, no, but what you doing, man? It's not raining. You're building a boat on dry land. Yeah, yeah. 20 years later, know it. You're still building this boat. Yeah. 40 years later, know it. Your faith is a bad choice. It ain't even, it ain't even sprinkling. Yeah. But when it started raining, they soon found out that yeah. faith is not a bad choice. Yeah. Ten spies <coughs> said to the other two spies and the rest of the nation, man, there's some big folk over there. Yeah. They all bigger than Shaquille O'Neal. Yeah. We can't your faith is a bad choice. Yeah. But they soon found out that faith is not a bad choice. Nebuchadnezzar told Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, also known as the three Hebrew boys, your faith is a bad choice. You didn't bow down to my golden image. Yeah. Your, your faith is a bad choice. I'm going to burn you alive. Mm. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. My faith is not a bad choice because I know my God can deliver me from the fire of punishment. Even if he don't, I'm not bowing down to your enemy. Faith is not a bad choice. The Rev Shaka told King Hezekiah that your faith is a bad choice. 
Then God sent the king of Assyria, a spirit and made him fall on his own sword. Faith is not a bad choice. Over there in the Christian dispensation, there were many that thought faith was a bad choice. And I as an Caiaphas told Peter and John, stop preaching in this man. Your faith is a bad choice. We're going to throw you in jail. Listen, you might as well throw me in jail and lock up the key. I would rather listen to God than listen to man. Faith is not a bad choice. The Jewish council told Stephen that his faith was a bad choice. Y'all might as well get the rocks and the bricks right now. I'm going to still tell it like it is. King Agrippa said, Paul, all this love that made you crazy. Your faith is a bad choice. Oh no, your royal highness. No, I'm saved by grace. My faith is not a bad choice. Listen, when the world sees you abstaining from filthiness and striving to live in holiness, they will tell you that your faith is a bad choice. But you hold on and hold out, my Christian brothers and sisters, because faith is not a bad choice. I'm here to tell you that no matter what dispensation of time it is, Faith is always the right choice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are determined that we're going to please the Lord. Right. And we got to walk by faith and in his word mm -hmm. and in his will. So these are a few things that faith is not. Yeah. So allow me to take a few minutes to look at what faith is. Okay. We have seen the fallacies surrounding faith. Let's take a moment to look at the facts around faith. Yes, Hebrews 11 and 1, we all know it. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Faith apprehends as a real fact what is not revealed to the senses. I think I need to say that again. Faith, it apprehends and understands as a real fact what is not revealed to our senses, my eyes, my ears, my, my touch. It rests on that fact, acts upon that fact. Mm -hmm. It is upheld by that fact. Even in the face of all that seems to contradict it. Yeah. Now faith is the substance. Yeah. The word substance is a compound word. Sub and stance. Mm -hmm. Sub meaning under and stance meaning a firm foundation. Yes, yes. Substance is the real nature of a thing which underlies and supports its outward form and proprieties. Mm -hmm. Substance means confidence. Right. Assurance is something that's concrete. Mm -hmm. The Master said in Matthew 7 and 26, for whoever hear these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, I will liken him as a man that built his house on the sand. And when the rain came and the winds beat against the house, it, it fell, and oh, how hard was the fall. He built his house on something that had no substance. Mm -hmm. It didn't have a firm foundation. Mm -hmm. Those who do not listen to Jesus mm -hmm. have no substance. Mm -hmm. Pilate said, Jesus, don't you know who you dealing with right now? Don't you know who I am? You, you better recognize. You better ask somebody. Don't you know I have the power to crucify you or the power to release you? Jesus says you couldn't have power against me at all unless it was given to you from above. What Pilate said had no substance. One of the tragedies of Christianity is that many church folks will say a lot of this and a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to them real closely, you will find that it's all talk. Yes. Somebody says, I want to be involved in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, I want to teach. Somebody says, yes, I'll show up at the building to help clean up. Mm -hmm. Somebody says, yes, I will help with this program. Unfortunately, many will not commit to the work of the Lord because they lack substance.
so the case can hold up. Mm. There are fingerprints and witnesses and DNA and, and videotape, videotapes, etc., etc. But if I stood before a judge and I'm in the court of law, and the judge says, "Mr. Jones, can you prove that your God is real?"
<laughs> we can pray about anything we want to. Uh -huh. Then we can hope that it will come to pass. Uh -huh. But we can only have faith in those things which God has already promised uh -huh. that will come to pass. Uh -huh. When I expect God to do as, as he promised, that's faith. Uh -huh. When we expect him to do as I wish, that's presumption. Our prayers of hope versus our prayer of faith. All right, when I pray that a friend or a family member will come to Jesus and be saved, mm -hmm. I can have faith that God will save, will save that individual as long as they hear the word, believe it, repent, confess, be baptized, and live a faithful life. I can have faith that God is going to save that individual. Mm -hmm. However, I can only hope that he will be saved because he may not decide to come to Christ. See the difference? When I pray that my needs are met, I can believe that they will be met because God promised that they will be met. Philippians 4, 19, and my God shall supply all your needs. When I pray that a person will be healed, I can hope that it'll happen. I know God has the power to heal, but I don't know if that's his will. There are times we pray for folk, and yes, they were healed, they were all right, but sometimes we pray for individuals and may not be God's will. You understand what I'm saying? Therefore, anything that is promised in the book can serve as a basis of genuine faith. So, what is faith? Faith is simply a, a deep self assurance that God will do exactly what he promised to do. Now, quickly, the function of faith. What exactly will faith do for you? After the way I say, there are certain functions which faith performs in our lives. As I look at these things, I can't help but to be encouraged. Faith calms our fears, y'all. Mm -hmm. Faith calms our fears. Yes, Anybody in here besides me is in debt? <laughs> hey, man. Yes. Anybody got any health issues? Or just don't know what's going to happen. They're going through some struggles in life. Yes. We got some struggles, y'all. Yes. But faith calms our fears. I am not sheltered from bad things, but I'm in the midst of, in the midst of bad things. I have God's promise. Yes. I know that all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. And those So faith calms our fears, also faith cushions our fall. Mm. I'm not immune from sin, we're not immune from sin or temptations. <clears throat> but when I fall, I have this promise that if I sincerely repent, that I'll be all right. Mm -hmm. See, it is possible for the child of God to fall down, but through faith, we can never fall out. <laughs> now, this is not an excuse to fall, y'all. <laughs> But it is an encouragement to those who have and those who will. And while I'm flying by this show, let me just say this, if I may. For those who use that excuse, well, you know, I'm not, I'm just not there yet. <laughs> if you said to Jesus, Jesus, he's standing right, Jesus, I'm just not there yet. <laughs> Jesus will probably say, well, why aren't you there yet? You've been in the church for years. All those Sunday school lessons, all those Wednesday night lessons, all those sermons on Sunday, all those gospel meetings, all those lectureships, all those workshops, all the things that I have provided for you, why don't you have faith? It's no excuse for us not to have deep-seated assurance mm -hmm. in God. Faith also confirms our future. I don't know what I'm going to face tomorrow. But I know that when all my tomorrows are finished, I have a future secure in the Lord. Faith claims God's finance. Faith doesn't gorge itself on the slop of the world. It sets its sights high. Faith believes that God will be true to his word. Faith responds to that word, acts upon that word, and receives fulfillment of that word. In Romans 4 and 22, the Bible says, and being fully convinced that what he has promised he will also be able to perform. Mm -hmm. There are many who never learn what God can do because they will never be willing to believe what God can do. Mm -hmm. Faith also challenges our failures. What I mean by that is faith believes. Philippians 4.13, faith believes that I can do all things. Faith says that I can be all that God wants me to be. Faith accepts the notion that we don't have to settle for second best. Mm -hmm. Faith says that we can have everything that God has in store for us. Faith 
Faith says that we don't have to live to the lowest standards of the world. Faith just takes God at his word and serves him. Faith also calls on our friends. Faith says to those around us what God has done in our lives. And he could also do it in your life as well. Faith reaches out to those that are in sin because it knows that, that everyone who turns to Jesus for salvation can be saved. Mm -hmm. Faith believes that God's promise is concerning salvation by faith. So in conclusion, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Right. God's will is that we live by faith, y'all. That's his word. He wants us to live by faith. Not the blind leap of the foolish. Not the blank check of the misinformed. And faith is not a bad choice. But the deep settled assurance that what God has said he will do. He is more than able to do what he says he's going to do. We don't have to worry about a thing. Father is on deck. Amen. Faith says victory has already been won. Faith says the battle is yours. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. Faith says just wait on the power of El Shaddai. Faith says the one that will overcome has overcome. Faith says don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Amen, somebody. We don't have to worry about a thing. Because faith has all power. And it never fails. Don't worry about a thing. Because Father is on deck. The anatomy of faith. Somebody out there tonight want to come to Jesus by faith. He's calling you by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he wants you to have faith. He wants you to act on this faith. Faith is acting. The word believe, he that believeth and is baptized has the same Greek meaning as faith. It's business, it's all the same thing. And, 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 and if you believe that you are hungry, you're going to get something to eat. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. And is a conjunction where put two things together. If somebody say, well, you're going to get paid 1000 and $500, you want your and $500. <laughs> yeah. So I hope somebody want to come by faith today, by hearing his word, and believe in everything in here from Genesis to Concordance. Pray that you believe it all. Are you willing to say, you know what, I, I ain't been living right. Jesus, I'm going to change my life. That, that's just called repentance. I'm going to turn my life over to the master. And live a life, a faithful life. And then be immersed in water. Immersed in water for the forgiveness of sin. You know what? That's called an operation of faith. I can't see the blood, but I know by faith I'm coming in contact with the blood. Like I always like to say, we ain't nothing but a hospital, y'all. We, we ain't nothing but a big old emergency room. But the difference between us and half a hospital is that you don't have to sit here and wait on the doctor because the doctor is waiting on you. All you gotta do is come. And be baptized for the forgiveness. If you're not a member of the Lord's church, come by faith today and be immersed in water for the forgiveness of your sins and get out of that water a new creature and live a faithful life to our God Almighty. Mm -hmm. The anatomy of faith. I have decided to.